Hey there, pre-med. In this video, we're going to talk through simplifying organic redox reactions, which is one of the five major reaction types you need to know for organic chemistry on the MCAT. Those five reaction types are number one, redox reactions, number two, substitution reactions, number three, hydrolysis reactions, number four, addition or condensation reactions, and number five, isomerization reactions. So today, in this video, we're going to go through type 1 redox reactions. Before we get started, we need to define a couple terms so that we understand where we're coming from in these reactions, and those terms are oxidation and reduction. You may have heard the acronym OIL RIG. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. What are we losing and gaining? Electrons, in this case. So redox reactions are interesting where we're not actually changing atoms. We're not substituting atoms or losing or gaining full atoms. We're literally just changing valence electrons on a given atom in a molecule. And that usually changes the bond features or the charge of that particular molecule. So oxidation is loss of electrons. We're losing electrons from one of our atoms um, in our molecules and reduction is the gain of those electrons. So that's why we call these reactions redox because as one molecule loses electrons, the other molecule will gain them. They have to go somewhere, right? So often we'll call these half reactions where the, we have the reduction side of the reaction, the reduction half, and the oxidation half. Now this is great for general chemistry. We can follow those free electrons. Oftentimes in general chemistry, we can very obviously see that an atom has lost electrons because it goes from neutral to positively charged or from negative to neutral. But in organic reactions, things are a little complicated because our electrons are not free. They're usually involved in bonds, right? Covalent bonds between molecules. So we usually need a different definition to describe what's happening in oxidation and reduction. So I'm going to give you a new definition. Oxidation is gain of oxygen carbon bonds. So we're having more oxygen carbon bonds after an oxidation reaction. Reduction is loss of oxygen carbon bonds or gain of hydrogens. Hydrogens can also be used as a proxy for electrons in a lot of organic reactions. So in this case, we're having less oxygen carbon bonds and more bonds to hydrogen. So generally speaking, when we go through an oxidation reaction, we lose hydrogens and gain bonds to oxygen. In a reduction reaction, we lose oxygen carbon bonds, but we'll gain some hydrogen. So we'll show you what we mean with these examples in our types of redox reactions, but I want to make sure that we have a different definition of what oxidation and reduction is if it's hard to follow where our electrons are going in an organic molecule. All right, so let's start by talking through our first type of redox reaction, which starts with a primary alcohol. So this is our primary alcohol, ethanol. Eth meaning two carbons, right? O-L suffix for alcohol. How do I know it's a primary alcohol? Because the carbon that the alcohol is bound to has two hydrogens on it and is bound to another carbon over here, right? CH3. Uh, so basically the way I like to look at it is when we call something a primary alcohol, primary amine, it's when the carbon that that functional group is bound to has two hydrogens, all right? If it only has one hydrogen, it's a secondary alcohol, and if it has zero hydrogens on the carbon bound to the functional group, that's a tertiary alcohol, all right? So in this case, ethanol is a primary alcohol. All right, so our functional group of interest here is absolutely our hydroxy group, right? Because the rest of this thing's not very reactive, we just have kind of methyl chain here. And so we're gonna talk about what happens if we put an alcohol through a redox reaction. So if we put an alcohol through a redox reaction, and I'll tell you what we'll do is, it's already got a hydrogen on it, right? So what happens if I put it through an oxidation reaction? And I'll do oxidation in blue here. So oxidation, remember, is the gain of carbon oxygen bonds and the loss of hydrogen. So if we do that, what are we going to produce from this primary alcohol? If you said an aldehyde, you are absolutely correct. All right, so an aldehyde looks like this. 
where we've lost our hydrogen on our hydroxy group and one of our hydrogens from our carbon, right? Because now we only have one hydrogen remaining and we've formed a second bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So again, increasing carbon oxygen bonds, decreasing hydrogens. So we're forming here an aldehyde. Specifically, this is ethanal. Al refers to aldehyde, eth meaning two carbon still. So again, we haven't changed the number of um, carbon atoms and oxygens, we've just lost some hydrogens here, uh, which again, we can often use as a proxy for electrons. We've lost some electrons. So this is great, but we could go even further, right? We could add more oxygen bonds to this carbon. So if we did that, what would we get? If you said a carboxylic acid, again, you're absolutely correct. So in this case, we did actually get another oxygen here, right, on this carbon. So we now have no more hydrogens, all right, uh, but we did add an additional bond to oxygen here. And I'll, I'll redraw this guy in its proper orientation just so you guys can see. Um, it's the same thing. I just redrew it with the carbonyl facing upwards. And this, again, is ethanoic acid. Because again, we're not changing our base number of carbons, right? We're just kind of messing with the functional groups here. Uh, so we've gone from ethanol to ethanoic acid, right? Oic acid referring to a carboxylic acid. Awesome. So these are both oxidation reactions, okay? One's just going further. So how do we do an oxidation reaction? Where is Where are these electrons going? What's happening? I told you that we need to also have a reduction reaction, right? Where is the re in the redox in this particular reaction? Well, it's coming from our oxidizing agents, all right? So oxidizing agents are what allow our oxidation reactions to happen. They're not catalysts because they are changing, right? They are getting reduced. So it's important to note that an oxidizing agent is what's driving the oxidation of the ethanol, of the alcohol here, right? But as that ethanol loses, those hydrogens, those electrons, they have to go somewhere, so they go on to the oxidizing agent. All right, so the oxidizing agent itself is getting reduced, but it's resulting in an oxidation reaction of our other reactant, all right? Now, there are several types of oxidizing agents that are good to know for testing. The first one I want you to know is PCC, which stands for peridinium chlorochromate, big mouthful, PCC, which is known as a weak oxidizing agent. All right, so this one is excellent to use for this initial reaction from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde, right? Because we don't wanna go all the way to a carboxylic acid if we just wanna to get to an aldehyde. So it'd be a good idea to use a weak oxidizing agent like PCC. If we did wanna go all the way to carboxylic acid, we'd wanna use a stronger oxidizing agent. This would be something like potassium dichromate or potassium permanganate, KMNO4. All right, those are two examples of stronger oxidizing agents that we could use to convert a primary alcohol into a full carboxylic acid to go all the way through an aldehyde. Now I want you to notice something. Look at this, all these oxygens in an oxidizing agent. So a cool way of just Identifying an oxidizing agent is that they have a lot of oxygens in them, right? So they're going to, again, want to oxidize other things and get reduced themselves, right? They are going to want to grab onto those electrons because, again, oxygens are very electronegative. They want those electrons, so they're going to grab those electrons off of something else, like our alcohol, and oxidize that other thing so it itself can get reduced. So again, oxidizing agents are often full of oxygens. In fact, here's a full list of the oxidizing agents that are nice to know for the MCAT. As you're learning these, I want you to recognize that all of them are doing the same type of reaction, and whether or not they're better or worse really depends on their chemical composition and how badly they want those electrons. So I don't want you to stress too, too much about memorizing all the specifics because often on the MCAT, it's really just about identifying that you have an oxidizing agent Therefore, you're going through an oxidation reaction. So far, so good. You're like, Amanda, that's pretty cool. But what about if I have a secondary alcohol? Great question. Let's talk about it. So let's say we have a secondary alcohol. Let's say our alcohol looks like this. 
So it's secondary again, right? Because we just have a one hydrogen uh, bound to the carbon on our functional groups. This is a secondary alcohol. And this one is one, two, three carbons. So it's two propanol, identifying where the functional group. This is also known as isopropyl alcohol. That's its common name. All right, so this is a secondary alcohol. So what do you imagine will create if we go through an oxidation reaction? Let's say I put it with PCC or even one of our stronger ones. What would I create if I lost hydrogens and gained bonds to oxygen? If you said a ketone, you are absolutely correct, right? This is a carbonyl group, but it's a ketone functional group as well. Both of them are correct answers here. Ketone is just more specific. Um, and so this is 2-propanone, also known as acetone. All right, so for this product, this carbon has already lost all of its hydrogens, right? It cannot get oxidized anymore. So for a secondary alcohol, we're going to stop at a ketone. All right, and this is true uh, for many types of secondary alcohols, including things like ring-based structures, like a phenol, all right, is we're gonna go through and produce a ketone and that's it if we're going to oxidize any kind of ring-based structure because they're all secondary uh, alcohols here. All right, and this is true for any secondary alcohols. We're going to produce only a ketone product and not go any further because there are no more hydrogens to lose. So ketone is our final product of the oxidation of a secondary alcohol, no matter where we start. So we can pretty much use any oxidizing agent. We can use PCC. We can even use something like a hydrogen peroxide or ozone, right? Anything that's going to be oxidating is going to want to grab those electrons or those hydrogens off of an alcohol. It's going to produce a ketone. We've now oxidized our organic molecules. Before we get into reducing them with reducing agents, I'm Amanda Bram and I've been coaching students on their MCAT journeys since 2019. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos on MCAT content, test taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on test day. And if you'd like more interactive lessons on topics like these, including study planning and individualized support throughout your prep, go ahead to the link in the caption below, which will take you to our next available live online MCAT course. Okay, let's do reduction. All right, so the reduction of organic molecules is really just the reverse of our oxidation reactions. So we're starting here with either a carboxylic acid or an aldehyde and or a ketone, right? So we're starting here with either our kind of resulting in our primary alcohols or resulting in our secondary alcohols. So if we reduce either a carboxylic acid or an aldehyde, both of those reduction by adding a reducing agent, right, are going to produce primary alcohols. We're going to get back to our ethanol here. All right, similarly, with our ketone, we're going to go through a reduction reaction by adding our reducing agent, right, which will get oxidized. The reducing agent is going to lose the hydrogens or electrons and give them to our other reactant here, right? And so for our ketone, that's going to result in a secondary alcohol, right? Our isopropyl alcohol again. So it's truly just the reverse of the reactions we just discussed. We're just adding in a reducing agent instead of an oxidizing agent. Now, both of these reactions that we just described could be used with lithium aluminum hydride, which is one of our most common reducing agents. You'll see them all around a lot. We also have other reducing agents like sodium borohydride, BH4, or borane, BH3. Now there's a slight nuance here. Sodium borohydride prefers to reduce ketones whereas borane prefers to reduce carboxylic acids. So we will see uh, that borane, BH3, would really prefer to reduce carboxylic acids and sodium borohydride prefers to reduce ketones, uh, but lithium aluminum hydride will do both. So that's a great one for any option here uh, in our reduction reactions, our reducing agents. Again, I want you to notice the key feature of all of these reducing agents. They all have a bunch of hydrogens in it, which again makes total sense since we're donating these hydrogens to the other molecule, right, to reduce them. So oxidizing agents have a lot of oxygens, reducing agents have a lot of hydrogens. That's the focus I want you to have as you go through these molecules and these reactions, 
looking at key themes, overarching ideas, so that you can correctly eliminate answers and find the general principles that are most testable on the MCAT. We've now done an overview of redox reactions in organic chemistry. Remember, when you're looking at an organic synthesis or a set of reactions and you're like, hmm, is this redox? Look for, did I change the number of oxygen carbon bonds, either increase or decrease? Did I add or take away hydrogens? And did I have reducing agents or oxidizing present in my question setup or my reaction in the passage? Keep practicing with organic style passages and MCAT questions to make sure you can apply these concepts and keep redox in its own category in your organic note. If this video was helpful for you, please feel free to share it with your pre-med community so we can all continue to support each other as we reach for our MCAT and pre-med goals. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, happy studying.